Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel Sharon Sews. This is where we talk about sewing. Today's video is a sewing chat, a little monthly catch up. Let's start with what I'm wearing because I did indeed sew this t-shirt. It's a t-shirt from the Berta April 2022 magazine. Here's the cover if you wanna see if you happen to have that in your stash. And it is t-shirt number 102 right here. Just a comfy, little bit oversized, little bit boxy t-shirt, but what's different about it is the sleeves. It's knotted. Let's see if we can show it on camera. Does it show? Super easy t-shirt to sew, by the way. Front, back, neck band, and the sleeves, two pattern pieces, and that's because you need to twist it to create this little knot twist detail right here. Little tip for you, you want a very lightweight fabric because this, there's some bulk here. And I think if you get too much, first of all, you'll have difficulty making this twist. Second of all, it's gonna feel funny because it does feel a little funny right now. This t-shirt was part of my March Fabric to post for Fabric Mart blog, and I will link that to the description box below. I also sewed a sequin duster using a sewing workshop pattern and a knit maxi dress using a sewing workshop pattern. I'll give you more details on all of those when I do my quarterly makes video coming up soon. I sewed three other knit tops this month. I sewed a Glenelli top from Itch to Stitch. I've sewn four, maybe five of these. I can't remember for sure now. And I've also sewn the dress. This fabric is a Walmart pre-cut bundle that I've had for a couple years. It's a double brush polyester knit. I was gonna make my daughter some pajama bottoms and I thought polyester for sleeping, that wouldn't be very comfortable. So it's just kind of been hanging around. I had it in my donation bin and I looked at it again and I thought, I like those colors. They're very springy. I don't care if it's a double brushed poly. I'm making a Glenelli t-shirt. The other two knit shirts that I sewed are also an itch to stitch pattern. It's the Zako Pownow shirt. And I only have one to show you right here. I tested this one for itch to stitch and I was really concerned about this neckline. I have a pretty large vest and I don't like to show a lot of cleavage. This does show cleavage and it has to show cleavage because of the way, well, it doesn't have to show cleavage. What I meant to say is it has to be this low because of the way it's sewn here, the way the twist is made. That's where the fullness for the bust is coming from. And I discovered after I've worn it a few times, I don't mind it. It's not obscene. There's definitely some cleavage and I'm not gonna wear it to church, but it's not bad. I can wear it about town. I can wear it to dinner. It's actually quite flattering in my opinion. And I saw a number of shirts online with this detail at the neckline. So it's a very current pattern. The other one I sewed, I can't show it to you because it's packed up and on its way to my daughter. I used a purple knit. It's a very lightweight knit. It has a slight metallic to it, which didn't quite pick up in the photos, but it's also kind of a tie dye pattern. She really liked it. She loves purple. And I thought this would be quite flattering on her also. So I sent it to her. Besides, I can always sew myself another one, right? There is one more itch to stitch garment that I did sew this month. I can't share it with you yet. It was a test at the time this video is being published. It has not been released yet. I will say that I do like it. And I think it's gonna be a popular release. If you watched my Sew Frugal 23 plans video, you might be wondering, why are you not posting your Sew Frugal makes today? Because today is Friday the 31st, the deadline for the challenge. Let me tell you, I brought my machine in for service. I brought it in for its annual maintenance. There's nothing wrong with it, but I do annual maintenance on all of my machines. I'm not sure if that's something you do or not. I am fanatical about cleaning my machine, oiling it per instructions because every manufacturer and every machine is different. But I oil it, I clean it, and I take it in yearly for an annual check annual checkup. I go for an annual checkup myself and my Dog goes for an annual checkup while my sewing machines do also. So I didn't have a machine. I still don't have a machine at the moment. So I haven't been able to sew my sew for go. I just didn't want to stress myself out over a sewing challenge. I mean, let's be real. It's just sewing. Yes, today was the deadline, March 31st, but I'm okay with not having a chance to win a prize. I do it just to participate with the sewing community. I'm hopeful that what I sew inspires you and also that I 
have found patterns that maybe you hadn't thought of trying before. That's the main reason I participate in So Frugal. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified when I do indeed get those posted for you. When I brought my machine in for its annual checkup or spa day, as I like to say, she's in for her spa treatment. I knew that the timeline was going to be three to four, possibly five weeks because they just have a lot of machines to work on at the moment, which is good. That means people are sewing, right? I realized it might not be a bad idea to have a backup Bernina. So I talked to Katie at a Nimble Thimble, got a couple options from her, ended up purchasing a backup machine. No, the machine isn't in there. Do you really think I could do that if the machine was in there? Here's the box and the machine is not in there because I've also been doing some like beginner sewing lessons with just a select few people. It's not something that I'm advertising because I'm not selling my services. That sounds really bad because I'm not selling teaching lessons. Does that sound better? So I'm not really advertising. It's been a little bit more people that I have a relationship with. Hey, could you teach me how to sew? Hey, could you help me with this? Those type of things. So I actually have my backup machine set up in our office because that way if somebody does not have a machine, it's a lot easier for them to go into our office, use that machine and not come back into my sewing space, which is pretty organized, but there are times that it can get a little messy and I really don't want other people in here. As I said, Katie had given me a couple options and I went back and bought the 535. That's the one that I felt worked best for my needs as a backup machine. It's smaller than the 770 QE, so it's not as heavy, a little bit easier to transport. I suppose I have to go to Minnesota for family. I have elderly parents. There's a possibility I might want to be there for an extended period of time. And then I could bring a sewing machine with me and do a little sewing if I have some downtime. I did film an unboxing video for the 535. Once I have a chance to actually sew a little bit more on that machine, I'll put that video together. So it might be a machine that you're interested in in the future. I bought a couple patterns this month. I don't buy a lot of patterns any longer. And I'll be honest with you, the main reason is because Hobby Lobby doesn't have their pattern sales any longer. I used to pick up Simplicity and McCall's patterns when they were on sale because that's the closest place I can go to for fabric or sewing notions. The Joanne Fabrics closest to me is an hour away and honestly, I'm not going to drive an hour just to see if there's a pattern I want that happens to be on sale. That being said, I bought two Simplicity patterns. I actually purchased them online. They were on sale for I $4.99, $5.99 plus shipping, of course, so then you got to add on to that. What I bought is $97.49. This is a little out of my comfort zone. And I was intrigued by this little opening here, right here. I don't know if I can get away with that or not. Cutouts are just still kind of a big trend. Some of the cutouts aren't very classy in my opinion, but you know, you wear what you love. I'm a firm believer in that. You wear what you love. I wouldn't be comfortable in it. This one I think I would be comfortable in. I'm gonna try it, see what I think. If I don't like it, I can always put fabric or something there. Or I'll figure it out. So that's the first one I bought. And then look at this, how cute is this? 97.65. I have five great nieces that I'm actually gonna sew the crown for them. I don't know if I'm gonna do the wings. It depends on how much time that takes. That might be a Christmas gift. But I thought the crowns would be so cute. And it's a scrap buster. So I picked this pattern up. Yes, of course, I could have figured out how to do a crown without the pattern, but I bought it anyway. It's adorable. Plus it's even got one for the little, it's even got one for the little doll. How cute is that? I wonder if I could make one for a Barbie if that would just be way too tiny. Stick around, I'll let you know how that works out. The other pattern I purchased is one that I used to have and I wanted to re-sew it and I don't have it, so I'm sure when we moved four years ago, it got lost. It is 63.56 from 2011. Now, the reason I wanted to sew this again is because draping is trending again. I sewed that in a stripe. I absolutely loved it. Well, my daughter loved it just as much, so I ended up giving it to her. I was always gonna sew myself another one, and then, <laughs> of course I didn't. You know how that is, right? When you have so many things you wanna sew, you think you're gonna do it, and then you get distracted and you move on to the next thing. But I repurchased the pattern. It was eBay or Etsy or one of those sites and it wasn't too unreasonable. Did you know some of those patterns they were asking 
$20, $30 for out of print patterns. I'm sorry, but mm -mm, I'm not paying that much. I don't care how much I want that pattern. And I'm telling you, I've got some old Vogue designer patterns that are listed for a lot of money on those sites. And if they sell for that much, then I'm selling my collection of vintage Vogue patterns. Speaking of patterns, I'm sure by now you've all seen that Vogue released their spring 2023 patterns. I'm pretty sure there's probably a couple YouTube videos that are showing them to you. I did not put a video together, but I think I'm going to. Because you can use these spring 2023 designs that Vogue released to get some designer and higher end ready to wear looks. I love designer inspiration looks because I certainly don't have the budget to buy a designer garment. I mentioned that this pattern was probably lost or more likely donated when we moved four years ago. Yes, it's been almost four years since we have moved to Texas. Time went so, so fast. But not only the move anniversary coming up, I have my major surgery anniversary coming up. April 1st, 2019, I underwent about an eight hour surgery on my spine. They put in a shunt to drain a Cyrix that was pressing on my nerves that was causing some pretty bad things to happen. You know, I don't talk about personal things on this channel very often. I like to keep it sewing related and fashion related and just make it fun and upbeat and inspirational for you. But that surgery is a major part of my life journey. And April 1st, it's a four year anniversary. I still have the big scar in the back of my neck. My hair's fairly long, so you don't typically see it. But I'm going to show a picture of what it looked like in the hospital and what it looks like now. So if you get a little queasy, just divert your eyes for a moment. I know when I mention it, people are always curious, well, what happened? So real briefly, if you're interested, if you're not interested, forward on to the next section. But we're going to back up to July of 2019. I was practicing a routine for a Zumba class. For those of you that don't know, I had a full-time career, but I also taught fitness classes. I taught a Zumba Gold, a Zumba Toning, and a Pound Fitness. If you don't know what Pound is, it's with the drumsticks where you do a lot of squats and a lot of core work. I was practicing a Zumba routine. I was doing a Bollywood routine, which had a movement like this. And I could only do this. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why can't I bend my wrist? So I didn't think a whole lot of it. I just changed the routine and did something else. But I was noticing more and more things. Not only could I not bend my wrist, I was having a little bit of trouble with my ankles and I was starting to lose strength, like big time, big time strength in my hands. I had a hard time holding onto my steering wheel to get to work. I had a hard time holding a pen to write. I, had a hard time getting a bottle of water open. I was losing a lot of strength. And I noticed in my classes that I was teaching, we had one routine with the pound. Again, I said, that's a lot of squats where we did lunges. I couldn't do a lunge. I could go down, but I couldn't get myself back up. So I was losing strength in my legs also. So of course I went to my doctor and that started months and months and months of tests, lots and lots of tests. I was tested for everything, you know, the MS, ALS, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Um, I can't even think of everything at the moment. I went through a battery of tests. And what it came down to is I was diagnosed with a Cyrix in my spine in that in layman's terms that I could understand it. It's a fluid filled cyst that was pressing on my nerves and causing all of the loss of strength in my body. So an appointment was scheduled to the neurosurgeon. I thought we were just gonna talk about what they had found and he started talking about what the surgery entailed. And I said, well, what, what, what? He's like, yes, you have to have surgery. And I'm like, well, is it gonna fix? Am I gonna get my strength back? He goes, well, there's no guarantee of that. And I go, well, why would I have surgery if there's no guarantee I'm gonna get better? And he said, because if you don't have surgery, you will continue to get worse, so. I think at that point, we already had our move scheduled for Texas. I think it was five weeks out and I said, how soon can you get me in? It was a successful surgery, obviously, or I wouldn't be here, but I did wake up with my left side completely numb. My left foot is still numb. Sometimes you'll see that in videos. You can be watching for that now. Every once in a while in the video, I lose my balance just a tiny bit. And that's because I don't have complete feeling in my left foot, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay could be worse, could be a lot worse. I have really strong faith 
and complete trust in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And that's what got me through the hard time because I just leaned on him. The surgery wasn't the end of the story. We moved three weeks later, cross country from Minnesota to Texas. I was not healed yet. I could not find anyone in this area that would see me for a follow-up appointment. So we had to drive back to Minnesota for my follow-up appointments with the neurosurgeon. Unbeknownst to me, that surgery triggered rheumatoid arthritis. I still hadn't recovered all of the strength. I was in constant pain. I wasn't able to sleep much. But I was able to get into the sewing room in the middle of the night when most of the world's sound asleep and <laughs> try and I was cutting like this with my sisters. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but it wasn't funny at the time because I just didn't have any strength. And you know what? It just sewing made me feel normal. The end of the story is good because I couldn't do anything. I started a YouTube channel because that was something I could do. And four years later, I'm basically pain-free. I don't have the strength that I used to have, but that's my own fault because I'm not going to the gym and working out. I'm good, I'm here, I'm connecting with all of you. Sometimes we have trials that bring us pretty low because then the only way out is to look up. For me, sewing isn't just a creative outlet, it was therapy. Maybe it is for you too, or maybe it has been. And if you're going through something right now, I'd love to pray for you. Leave it in the comments below for me. That was kind of a long abbreviated version of what happened. I hope you were okay with that because that's a lot more personal than I typically get on this channel. We're gonna go back to our normal sewing content at this time. I stopped by Hobby Lobby the other day because I was looking for some Easter decor and I thought I would just wander over to the fabric section see what they might have. They've remodeled. I haven't been there for a while. They did a whole remodel of that whole section and I was quite pleasantly surprised to see not a lot, but a larger selection of garment quality fabric. I picked up two pieces. I picked up this. This is um, an embroidered tool. I don't know how that's going to show up on the camera. This is what I'm going to do with it. I saw this, one of those Facebook ads that pops in your feed based on what you look at and search for. I saw this and I thought, oh, I'll just make one. Granted, this doesn't have the 3D floral, but it's gonna give me the look that I'm going for. And I was in a thrift store looking for a shirt to go with this. I might just sew a shirt to go with it because then it's gonna fit me right. So this is piece number one that I purchased. Piece number two, this is a rayon linen blend. Can you believe that at Hobby Lobby? Look at the colors on this. Isn't this fabulous? I bought four yards. At first I was thinking that I would make a pair of pants and then I bought four yards in case I wanted to make a maxi dress and now I think I might want to make pants. I don't know what I want to do with that. What do you think? Maxi dress or wide leg pants and a top? It could be like a faux jumpsuit. Maybe that's what I want to do. Oh, give me your suggestions in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm gonna break away from sewing content and give you a puppy update. It'll be short. She's nine months old, she's 65 pounds. She's still in training. We've been doing a lot of training with her. The reason we've been working so hard with her on training is because she's a big dog. We want her to have good manners. I also wanna be able to take her out into the community. And part of that is a dog's personality. She's a pretty laid back, mellow dog. And I'm so proud of her, she passed her canine good citizen test recently and we participated in a fundraiser it's a local fundraiser for a local animal shelter there were 300 dogs there but she did it there's another sewing challenge coming up in april it's called so selfless i do not think i participated in this one last year but i'm very interested in participating in it this year i had one thought in mind and I have changed directions. My video with my plans for So Selfless will be published on April 4th. What have you been up to? Leave it for me in the comments below. Until I see you in the next video, I hope you have a blessed day. Happy sewing.